Hey there folks, Aldershot here, and today we're going to do an impression on Never Alone, developed by Upper One Games and on sale on Steam at the regular price of $15. Now Never Alone certainly is an interesting title. To break it down simply, it is a platform puzzler, okay, but the game is a little bit more than that. It's what I would call a tribute to the indigenous people of Alaska. Everything about this game is pretty much kind of a tribute to that culture from the visuals to the story which is based off of a folklore of said culture which is kind of interesting all right so let's take a look at some of the features that you'll get with this game uh, one of the most interesting features that I found with this game is something called the cultural insights which are basically short little films that you can unlock while playing through the game. Now besides being educational and interesting, going into uh, the indigenous people of Alaska's culture, heritage, uh, its folklore, its lifestyle, etc, etc. One interesting feature about this is as you unlock these videos, the topic of said video will actually work its way into the gameplay itself which not only adds some interest to the topic but also adds some context to the game and its environment and its mechanics as well which is fantastic I think which is definitely something very interesting so let's take a look at some of the options uh, I am using the gamepad uh, I haven't used the keyboard and mouse with this but I can say it works fine with the gamepad it is a platformer is certainly the controller of choice for me uh, as far as settings go, now the video settings, not overly robust, unfortunately. Uh, the main key uh, option is the quality control, which is basically just two presets, uh, either high or low. Obviously, we're going to play on high. Now, luckily, this game is probably not going to strain most machines, so it does have that as a saving grace. Uh, we also have audio options, which is your standard issue volume sliders. Then we have your input settings. Unfortunately, I don't think there is a custom bind option, at least none that I could find. Uh, and in the advanced options, it's mostly sensitivity sliders, all right? Now, this game does feature two players as well, which we'll talk a bit more about when we get into the game. Uh, so there you go. That's some of the features and options in the game. So let's actually get into the game. Now I've already finished the game. You'll get around anywhere between three to maybe five hours of gameplay depending on how you play of course. Uh, so we are going to skip through the first chapter because it is just uh, tutorials and um, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go right into the second chapter. And at the beginning of each chapter, there will be a cutscene and some narrative, uh, which is actually really well done, so I'm going to give you an opportunity to watch and listen to that. So there you go. A little bit of the narrator, as you can see. Uh, now, if you can't tell already, the narrator is speaking in the native language of uh, the indigenous people of Alaska which is very suiting and appropriate uh, considering the game's theme and all with your choice of Spanish or English subtitles. Obviously I chose English because that is the language that I best understand. <laughs> all right. And as you can see the wind is blowing us and you can actually seek shelter from the wind. Let's see here we can get it to kick up uh, by pressing B if you're using the Xbox controller. Alright, and that'll keep you from bl being blown away. Now as you can see, we are using uh, two, there are two characters on the screen right now. Currently we're using Nunu, who is the heroine of the game, the little uh, indigenous girl. And we also have the wolf, or the fox I should say, actually. Oh, there we go. Brace against the wind, there we go. that's what I was talking about. 
and he is basically kind of like your spirit animal. Uh, both these characters you can control, either or, and they both feature their own separate kind of uh, mechanics and uh, elements as well, okay? Oh, I gotta remember to brace myself when the wind comes. Uh, the, the wolf basically can allow you to climb up walls and s control spirit animals and all that kind of good stuff. Whereas Nunu, the, uh, the female little girl, she can push objects and uh, later on she'll get a tool uh, where she can sling around and break ice and all that kind of good stuff. Alright, so here's a little example of one of the spirit creatures that the wolf can sort of control and kind of help along with your journey. Alright, now if you're playing two players, you will have one player controlling each character, which certainly will help things along. Uh, the AI overall does a pretty good job of doing what it's supposed to do, although you switch AI at wrong points, like mid-jump sometimes, it will cause death, so do be careful of that. And certain parts of the game, the AI can be a little bit difficult to work with, all right? Just so you guys are aware of that. But luckily, those occurrences are far and in between, all right? Now, before I continue with talking more about the gameplay, I kind of want to talk about uh, the visuals of the game. It's certainly something that I'm sure most of you guys have taken and a bit of attention to already. Certainly, the visual style is very, very striking, very appropriate for the game, and extremely well designed. It's very, very appealing, if nothing else. And I would say it's cute. <laughs> it's pretty damn cute. Okay? Uh, you got your, you know, you got your little girl and your wolf, and tell me that's not, that's not as cute as the bee's knees right there. Aww. <laughs> Uh, certainly very, very appealing, if nothing else. It's well designed, uh, and you really get a sense that it is in the Arctic. You know, the environment is well designed, the characters are very appealing and well designed. You know, the models are well detailed, the animation is also just as detailed and lifelike. And the best thing about the visual is that even the anatomy of the character is distinctively indigenous, which is fantastic. Because much too often do we see uh, people of race being featured in media that look all too European with only the complexion of said race as the distinguishing feature. Uh, but luckily for us in this game, it does do a very, very good job at paying tribute to the culture that this game is based off of, uh, down to its style, you know, its inclusion of traditional artwork. Uh, its environmental design, as well as the character's anatomy itself. Again, very distinctly indigenous. Indigenous. I'm, I have a trouble. I have trouble pronouncing that word. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but you guys get what I'm saying, which is very, very good. Oh, I don't think I was supposed to fall into the water. <laughs> but overall, the visual style is, of course, as mentioned before, well designed very appealing, very striking, definitely catches the eye, and is definitely, definitely one of the better aspects of the game. Uh, to be honest, overall, this game is very enjoyable, okay? Uh, now, the platforming is, generally speaking, fairly basic and simple. Uh, later on, however, though the platforming never really gets overly too complex, it does throw some new elements your way. The puzzles, however, can get very perplexing at times. Uh, at first, they are fairly simple and easy to figure out, but later on, the puzzles become a little less obvious. It will certainly take a lot more trial and error. The wind keeps blowing us off in the cliff, which is unfortunate. Uh, and so you do have to keep that in mind. So for those who enjoy those elements of puzzle platformers, you'll definitely get your fill from this game for sure. All right, let's see here. We got to, all right, we got to bring this platform down. Make sure the wind don't blow us away. Climb up this way. Okay, I think we're making some headway here. 
All right, so as you can see, you know, there is certainly some elements, some puzzle elements to the puzzle platform. Uh, and again, as mentioned, later on, it certainly does get a lot more complex. Remember, this is only the second stage, so, you know, it's slowly introducing new things to us. Oh, a cutscene. Now, cutscenes are actually done quite well in this game as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about the story uh, just down the road after this cutscene. <laughs> Excuse me. In <laughs> So that's kind of cool. Uh, later on, as I mentioned before, it will get into more and more cutscenes. Uh, and that cutscene was really well done, in my opinion, because, you know, it takes the traditional artwork of, of these people and kind of animated it. Uh, in a very well presented kind of form, which is of course very suit suitable <laughs> considering the topic of this game, okay? Now I mentioned the puzzle platforming can get kind of complex later on down the road, certainly that can be the case and it can be very rewarding once you figure out those puzzles as well. Uh, now you do control two characters at once, as mentioned before, and for the most part the AI does a pretty good job, but sometimes the AI is not up to snuff. Sometimes the AI is just not smart enough, so if you have another player playing with you, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, the AI is not terrible though. I say about 80 to 90% of the time the AI is actually quite smart and does the job very, very well. It's just that 10 or 20% of the time, sometimes it can get a little bit frustrating, okay? Uh, but anyways, uh, enough about that. Let's kind of talk about some of the story elements. Oh. Actually, we ran into a little bit of a bug. Because uh, I didn't climb on the stork in time, it's not coming back down. Which is actually something else that I should actually talk about. Luckily, we have a reset from last checkpoint option, which we will definitely use in this case, seeing how we're stuck. <laughs> now, this game, again, is very, very well presented, as I mentioned before. However, you know, there is sometimes some bugs as well here and there. We just kind of saw one there. Uh, if we don't climb on a stork in time, unfortunately it doesn't come back down, and you get stuck in that spot, <laughs> which unfortunately seems to be happening again, so we're going to just restart again, unfortunately. You really have to get both characters, and this is also another case where the AI might not be as smart as you might want it to be. You know, ideally you want both characters to jump on the stork's nose at the same time, or at least, you know within a reasonable interval of time. So now I gotta switch to the fox. There we go. Now we're going. Now we're going places. There we go. So, you know, sometimes there is some bugs. The AI is not perfect. These are probably the lesser elements of this game. And hopefully these things can be patched. Uh, but generally speaking though, this game is very, very enjoyable. Uh, the puzzle elements are actually very, very well designed, as you can see. That was actually kind of fun and cool. <laughs> uh, moving with the wind is definitely going to be one part of the puzzle-solving element. Uh, the visual design is amazing, as you can see. Uh, very appealing characters, very, very well designed, and very true to its source material. Uh, and something I never really got a chance to talk about, which I'll take the opportunity now is that the narrative is very well designed as well it definitely tells a very very interesting story of a uh, this girl trying to save her village from this upcoming blizzard who meets this fox the, her spirit animal if you will and it does a pretty good job at telling the story of their relationship 
and how the kind of story progressed. And of course, there's a great job at paying tributes of the folklore that this game is based off of, which those videos that I talk about uh, in the beginning of this video kind of detail a little bit more often. I should talk about this owl as well. Uh, I was talking about the little videos that you can unlock as you play through the game. Well, I've already unlocked them because I already finished the game, but when you meet these owls that you see in the background, that's when you start unlocking those videos, which works itself into the gameplay. Okay, so overall, I have to say, Never Alone is a very, very enjoyable puzzle platformer that definitely nailed presentation, you know, right on the head. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful game. Uh, the narrative is well told. It definitely has a very heartfelt story, for sure. And later on, there will be things that will happen that will definitely surprise you, which will work itself into the gameplay as well. And I don't want to spoil those elements. You'll have to just play it yourself. All right. Oh, this is a good opportunity for me to show what uh, Nunu, the little Indian, the little uh, Alaskan girl, can do. Uh, she can move objects, of course, whereas the wolf can control and summon spirit animals. But I think you guys kind of get the idea of the game. You know, a very interesting puzzle platformer for sure. Uh, again, one with a very heartfelt story that does a very, very good job at paying tribute to its source material. Uh, sometimes the puzzles can be very challenging. Sometimes it can be quite uh, easy. You know, it depends on where you are in the map, of course. Uh, and overall, very enjoyable. And if you have, uh, if you're from Alaska or you have. Um, indigenous in your blood or your heritage this game is very much an easy recommendation as is a very very good celebration of said culture uh, or if you're just interested in indigenous culture itself this is also an easy recommendation if you if you're just a fan of puzzle platform games I think this is an easy recommendation as well okay uh, now, for those who are more gameplay-centric, who enjoy deep mechanics and all that, you might want to take a look into this game a little bit more before investing your money into. But again, for those who enjoy these sorts of games, who enjoy this culture, this is definitely one to watch out for. So anyways, I think you guys get the idea. <laughs> uh, this is definitely going to be one of the harder, more challenging puzzles that I spoke about earlier. Uh, so, we'll end the video here as not to embarrass myself too much. Oh, actually, alright, we solved it. That was easy. <laughs> um, but anyways, hope you guys found this informative. Hope you guys found this useful and enjoyable. And if you did, you know, show me some love, like, share, fave, and comment. Uh, but most importantly, help me grow, feed me my vegetables, and subscribe. Anyways, folks, thanks for watching. Uh, Aldershot out.